morning, everyone. So um, I wanted to talk about something a little bit different today, which is um, talk about all the ministries in the broader Orthodox world. Um, before we get into what is called the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops and the ministries that are there, I did want to mention briefly that our own metropolis, which is the metropolis of San Francisco, which is under Metropolitan Yerasimos, um, has a number of ministries, and uh, I'll give a little plug. There are envelopes like this on the back table that have a whole brochure of all the things that our metropolis has. And yes, because they are also looking for support for these ministries, but the ministries are Family Wellness Ministry, Missions and Evangelism, St. Nicholas Ranch and Retreat Center, Young Adult League, um, stewardship, music ministry, many different continuing, clergy continuing education, so many different ministries that our own metropolis has. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a fancy video to show you about those ministries, so we'll, we'll move on to the, the larger national ministries. But if you'd like to know more about it, these are also, the brochure is also on the bulletin board uh, towards the entrance of the fellowship hall, so you can read about all the different ministries and opportunities there, because <clears throat> okay, battery is dead already. Okay, um, I just changed them. That's okay. So um, the uh, the ministries of our metropolis are ministries that uh, directly help our metropolis parishes. These ministries are for all of Orthodoxy in all of the Americas, so an even broader span. So what I'd like to do is first tell you a little bit about um, the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops. There are nine canonical jurisdictions in the United States. There are non-canonical jurisdictions as well, so just be aware of that. But the canonical jurisdictions are the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, headed by Archbishop Elpidophoros, the Antiochian Archdiocese, of North America, which right now uh, has an interim uh, hierarch, Metropolitan Andonios. Then Bishop Matthew is with the Moscow Patriarchal Parishes, also known as Rokor, if you've heard of that, Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia. In the center on the top is Metropolitan Gregory of the American Carpatho-Russian Diocese. Below him is Archbishop Michael of the Orthodox Church in America. Below him is Bishop Arani, who is the Serbian Orthodox Church of North, Central, and South America. On the right side is Metropolitan Nikolai of the Romanian Orthodox Archdiocese. Below him is Metropolitan Joseph of the Bulgarian Eastern Orthodox Diocese. And below him is Bishop Saba of the Georgian Apostolic Orthodox Church. So those are all the jurisdictions. So what that means is any church under any of those jurisdictions is a church that you can walk right into and receive the sacraments. You may have to say to the priest, I go to a Greek Orthodox parish, I'm an Orthodox Christian in good standing, but we're all in communion. So the tangent to that is I encourage you, especially for those of you who are newer to Orthodoxy, go out and visit churches. When you're traveling, go visit more churches. Experience as much of the diversity of orthodoxy as you can. So all of these, these are not all of the hierarchs. These are just on the executive committee representing each of those jurisdictions. All of the hierarchs number much more than that. I believe around 30 or 40 hierarchs in North America. And so when the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops has a meeting, as it did just recently, all of those hierarchs are in attendance, and as is proper ecclesiology and orthodoxy, all of them have equal votes. There's no one person who has an overwhelming vote. There's a person who presides. The person who presides, in this case, is Archbishop Elpidophoros. But all of the hierarchs have an equal say in all of the decisions of the assembly. So this is a first step towards orthodoxy in America reaching its fullness in which there's one united jurisdiction. Obviously with all of these names up there, we don't have one united jurisdiction. So that takes quite a bit more time, but at least this is a step in that direction. And another very practical step in that direction is to have ministries that are working together. So that's what I'm 
introducing to you, to you here. Let's see, so I'm going to do this. So I will try the laptop speaker with the first video, and if it's just not working, then I'll go grab another speaker while we're watching the first video. Okay. So, go away. Sorry, the computer's catching up. Okay, so these are um, the ministries of the Assembly of Orthodox Bishops. I'll introduce you to, um, uh, there actually, there's another one which was just started, the Orthodox Youth Ministry. So I'll introduce you to that as well, okay? So the first that we're going to hear from is IOCC. like Hurricane Irma that damaged Juanita's roof in Florida, leaving water to seep down into her living room. With her limited income, Juanita could not afford repairs. IOCC teams got to work. Over the course of several weeks, they repaired the wall. In oh my goodness. We love technology. We love it. Inside the mountain. Rehung the window, patched the rotted floor, and painted the walls. Whether it was the war in Bosnia or fires in Greece, IOCC responded. When an explosion shook in Beirut in the midst of the global pandemic, our teams were there. And now, we continue to respond to the growing needs in Ethiopia, Syria, and Ukraine. IOCC's 30th year of service is a time for recommitment and renewal. The world has great needs, and through God's grace, together we will continue serving people in need around the world. Together we've helped millions, and together we can serve many more. Thank you for your service in the spirit of Christ's love. May God bless you. So IOCC stands <coughs> for International Orthodox Christian Charities, and that is really the philanthropic arm of the Assembly of, of Bishops, which is, and it's also one of the oldest of the, the ministries, uh, the Pan-Orthodox Ministries. Okay. Yes? Is, is that the American bishops? Or, yes. Because it says international. <coughs> Their work is international, but <clears throat> yeah, it, it's uh, it's uh, based in America. Yeah, from the American bishops only. So this is all outward work that the IOCC <coughs> does here in North America and also does throughout the world. So the next is Orthodox Christian Prison Ministry. <coughs> My 
my journey into the, the church was a very rocky road. It started out me going to jail. When I found myself in jail with without family, without friends, without anyone to lean on, I was tired of feeling alone. Coming from where I've come from, one of the struggles that I have is wondering what friends are actually true friends. So I started wanting something else to reach out to. I was getting to a point to where I was, I was about ready to, to give up on, on religion altogether because, because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't have a good guide. I didn't have any kind of guide. Being a history buff, I thought, well, let me see if I can find the beginnings of some of these religions and, and see if any of them have something that, that's the same all the way throughout. I had my mom mail me up uh, the New Testament Orthodox Bible, and in that is a address for OCPM out in California. So I wrote that address. I got a response back from a guy named Father Dwayne. I was starting to get the feeling of caring about their life. And I... I couldn't explain that. I didn't know where it came from and, and how, it, how it happened. But I was starting to want their approval more than anyone else's approval. I wanted to hear from them more than I wanted to hear from my own family. I didn't know how it was happening. I didn't know why it was happening. Because I didn't feel like I had done anything in this life worthy of that kind of attention. By the time I got out, what it had done was created a love for God and for the Orthodox Church that was beyond measure. To the point where I was willing to give up everything that this world could offer just for the opportunity to be able to go to church. And that's where I was at when I got out. By the time I got to the church, I had changed so much that I could see the goodness in humanity. I could see the goodness in the world. I could see the goodness in, in just nature. In, 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 and I wanted more of it. I, if my cup was overflowing, I felt like it was empty. I, 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 however much I had, I did not feel like I had enough. I talked with Father Jeremy. I pretty much broke down in tears in front of him. And I said, I want, I want to be a member of this church. I want to be a member of God's church. That's Orthodox Christian prison ministry, very uh, striking. And I'll mention about Orthodox Christian prison ministry, because some of these like IOCC and OCMC you might know about more and you might know to give them money or something like that. This ministry, like all ministries, could use money. But one of the ways that they are constantly reaching people is through correspondence. Another way that they're doing this is by offering Orthodox books in, in uh, prisons. 
So if any of you are interested in being involved in that, go to their website, look them up, and, uh, and let them know that you're interested in helping with that. Uh, there's also a prison locally that I know of that is open to having more orthodox books. So if you're interested in donating books, let me know. So the next is one that our college students know, which is, oh, no, it's not, I'm sorry. The next is actually OCMC. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my order here. disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. These words were Christ's last command to his disciples and to all the church before he ascended into heaven. And for 2,000 years, men and women have been traveling throughout the world to share the gospel. Today, there are still over a billion people who have not heard the message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is the work of the Orthodox Christian Mission Center, to bring people to Christ and to share His love. <laughs> 400 miles north of Nairobi, at the edge of a vast, rugged region called Turkana, Orthodox priest Father Vladimir Paul and Father Zachariah, with the blessings of His Eminence Archbishop Makarios, have been working with the OCMC to bring the Orthodox faith to the people that call this place home. OCMC is the greatest partner of the Church of Turkana. And the Church in Turkana has grown rapidly since the year 2007, when the first OCMC team was sent to Turkana. By then, we had only two communities and we had only 200 Orthodox people. <coughs> At the moment, we are 10 communities. We have 800 baptized Orthodox. The Turkana district of Northwest Kenya is a large territory and in recent years has been gripped by a severe drought that has had a profound impact on the lives of the Turkana people. The life in Turkana is a pastoralist life, going from place to place, looking for pasture and water. It is now 10 years the drought is in Sefia, has hit the Turkana community. So the animals have died of hunger, and many of them have lost these animals, and they are going into smaller communities that are sprouting within Turkana. To minister to the physical needs of the Turkana people, OCMC built a much needed water well deep within the interior to ease the suffering of the people there. Right, I mean, I could you is your writing. 
Potere a poto ko longo nga prong na dangi poto na purosyo. There is no greater gift that we as Orthodox Christians have to offer than this hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Your life and the lives of others can be transformed by the Holy Spirit by embarking on this journey of faith. Okay, so that's OCMC. Um, and that video, some of that was what was shown last night for those of you who came to the dinner. Uh, let's go back here. And now, on to OCF, which is our college ministry, Orthodox Christian Fellowship, of which uh, some of our kids are involved. Alex Davis is involved, right? Yeah. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here. I'm incredibly honored to represent Orthodox Christian Fellowship, and it feels surreal, but just so full circle. In my first year at Lehigh University, I don't even remember how many times I opened my mouth to speak, if at all, and yet somehow I graduated president of Lehigh Valley OCF chapter. By the grace of God, I attended two college conferences, multiple online gatherings, a retreat, and probably even more if it weren't for a global pandemic. I remember after service with the Cardiothi Sa Weeping Icon on the first night of my first college conference, I was praying to the mother of God alone in my room. I hadn't had a single conversation with anyone other than the three people I came with. I felt so defeated and desperate for change. I felt like I was letting sand fall through my hands and I was just too consumed by thoughts of how I might be annoying to someone to even start to speak to them. I mark clearly and distinctly that night as the beginning of my journey to opening my heart. Slowly, I began to pay more and more attention to the actions around me rather than the concerns in my head. I tried to leave behind the idea that there has to be a church Molina and leaned into the excitement that more or less everyone was here for the same few reasons. The more events I attended, the, the new faces in my chapter, or just situations that felt like I was taking too big of a step, the Orthodox world began to feel smaller and smaller and in the best way. I left my last college conference with so many lasting and intertwining connections that unexpectedly deepened my connection to the parish I had quietly been a part of for years. <laughs> So much so that I felt like I've been adopted by half the families at my church. People who have fed me, housed me, been there for me without question, didn't even know I existed my first two years of undergrad. If you were to ask any of my friends, my peers who have truly seen me grow in the past few years, they would attest to such a pertinent change, not in who I am as a person, but the way in which I am, leading my chapter was equally as humbling as it was fortifying, as I was surrounded by such knowledgeable, kind-hearted spirits in a position that forced me to consider the fact that sometimes it's okay or even necessary to be the center of attention. Silence is inarguably one of our greatest tools for learning about others and ourselves. And yet I have felt these moments of ineffable vicinity to Christ speaking just to speak to individuals of the same faith. I think about our OCF Thanksgiving dinner, our OCF virtual Christmas scavenger hunt, Zoom calls from across the world in the midst of chaos and yet completely at home. Even as plainly as 
What did you have for dinner tonight? Beans again? My 18-year-old self would have never fathomed leading a discussion, let alone speaking for a national convention. With the tug of war college students inevitably face keeping the church in the center of their hearts, being able to walk into an Orthodox church, usually countless miles from home, unlocks a universal feeling of coming home. Stepping into a narthex, being surrounded by the smell of incense and the familiar sounds of chanting can dissolve any border, worldly stresses, or studies. Simply, my heart exhales. The amount of tears, prayers, cycling through falling and repenting has continually granted me a life I never knew I would get to have or needed so deeply in my heart. I'm constantly proving my own doubts wrong by the ever climbing brink of my capabilities through Christ. And not to mention constantly amazed by the seemingly infinite patience of my spiritual father through the intercessions of the Theotokos, St. Paisios of Athos, St. Xenia of St. Petersburg, St. Erasmus of Kefalonia, just to name a few. I've been guided so ardently without fail that each time I think I know where things are headed in my life, I have been presented with the opportunity to do so much more, and especially the past few months. I have been purely overwhelmed by the presence of God in my life, and for this, the new beginnings paved, the new friends placed in my life, I cannot be thankful enough. I've learned there is simply no work that goes unaccounted for, whether it is in His grace to reveal it to us or not. OCF has paved my way for an irreplaceable sense of community, a space to relearn trust and joy. It is priceless and timeless to find sight of your value as a vessel of Christ. There are so many gifts I've been granted that I can only pray to know what to do with them all. I can only pray that the delivery of my work be pleasing to him who gave them to me. I pray that the Lord blesses each one of you, both in your trials and in your moments of peace, but above all, to continue to seek and foster the undeniable light of Christ in our neighbors and ourselves. Glorious forever in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's from one of our young Orthodox Christians. And if you would like to be more involved in what OCF is doing um, within our parish, I might point to Jennifer. She knows about a lot of college students in our parish if you want to be involved in their lives. Because as much as OCF does many different things, there are many campuses that OCF is not at. And we still have college students there. So even just writing a card, sending a little, some homemade cookies, these kinds of things are so memorable for our, our college students. So sorry to put you on the spot, Jennifer. <laughs> She's not a coordinator, but she knows who the, the people are. So, um, so then the last is um, Orthodox Youth Ministry. And uh, this is geared towards our young people. So uh, I don't know if any of you hey, know friends, Christian. Christian here. And it's a thing. I'll pause it for a second. So this Christian Gonzalez. He worked in the Archdiocese uh, Department of Youth and Young Adults, and now he's moved to working in Orthodoxy as a whole. Orthodoxy has been in America for how long? Many decades. <coughs> how long have we had a united front with our youth ministries? Two or three months. So that's what he's starting right now. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't youth ministry going on in each of these, as he'll mention, silos of the jurisdictions. They're each trying to address this in different ways. But the video uh, very aptly points to what is missing. So it is a little bit more poppy for you guys. So just brace yourself. Special Orthodox Youth Ministries is live. It's alive! The YouTube page is up and rolling. And you can know that because, well, you're watching this right now. You've waited and you've waited. You've scratched your heads and wondered what OYM is, how OYM can serve you, and what OYM plans to do moving forward. And these are all really important questions worth asking, but I wonder if there's a more fundamental question. Why does OYM exist at all? It's been nearly a year since the Assembly of Bishops approved the creation of OYM. And at this point, some things are probably still unclear. So, I want to take you back to a time when you were younger, 11 months younger to be precise, when you first heard tell of the creation of a pan-Orthodox youth and young adult ministry agency. Maybe you thought it was a good thing. Maybe you thought it was a bad thing. Maybe you thought it was a secret service thing, because for a long time it was referred to just as the agency. For the record, it's definitely not a secret service thing. Or, 
Maybe it is. Regardless, it is now time to tell you where OIM came from. That's right, folks. It's time for the OIM origin story. No, 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 that's, no, that's not us. We're a little more DC. <laughs> yeah, no, it still feels weird. In order to explain why OIM exists, I want to introduce you to some people. This is John. John is a youth worker at St. Barsanuthia's OCA Parish in Dayton, Ohio. He has been faithfully serving his parish for the last 10 years, and in that time, he's noticed a distressing trend. Most of the young people, something like 60%, grow up and go through his parish, leaving for college, only never to return again. This is Joanne. She is from St. Barsanuthia's Antiochian Parish in Houston, Texas. She is a young adult who grew up in a thriving youth program at her parish, and now she teaches Sunday school. She, too, has noticed this trend, except 90% of the young people she went to church and camp with have disappeared from church life. This is Yanni. He wears multiple hats at St. Barsanufios Greek Orthodox Church in Spokane, Washington, as a pastoral assistant slash youth director, and he, too, has seen an incredibly high attrition rate among young adults at his parish. All of these ministry workers stay up at night, racking their minds about what is going on, why the youth keep leaving the church, and how they can reinvigorate their youth program to ensure that young people leave for college as faithful Orthodox Christians. Unfortunately, none of them even knows each other. They are thousands of miles apart geographically, but their hearts are in the same place, and they're worried about what this means for the future of the church and the state of young people's souls. What they also don't know, however, is that Jovana and a group of other volunteers, mostly parents, at St. Barsanufius, Serbian Orthodox Church in Tampa, Florida, have been working at their parish for years and have a thriving youth and young adult ministry where people are plugged in to the larger community of the church. Each of these parishes and each of these jurisdictions has been siloed, left to figure out how to solve the problem of youth and young adults leaving the church for themselves. At the end of the day, we're all recognizing that there are some issues baked into the pudding at this point. There's one day pudding. Young people are leaving the church. Parishes and parish ministry workers are often disconnected from others. Jurisdictions too frequently operate independently. We're all left to our own devices, isolated and spinning our wheels as we all deal with the same problem, that young people are leaving the church and forgetting their faith. John, Joanne, and Yanni have noticed it. Jovana noticed it. No doubt you've noticed it. And your bishops have certainly noticed it. And that is why the assembly thought, maybe it doesn't have to be this way. Maybe something could be done to address this on a number of levels. First and most obviously, they saw this desperate need that would help young people live their lives as faithful Orthodox Christians. Secondly, they realized that people like John, Joanne, Yanni, and Jovana, and every other priest, pastor, and youth worker at all the St. Barsanufiuses, Barsanufii, needed to have a way to collaborate and work across jurisdictional divides. Thirdly, they saw that each jurisdiction and parish was often being left to figure things out for themselves, and this wasn't helping. They imagined a brighter future where people across orthodoxy could work together, where the jurisdictions could be united in an effort to solve this problem. To do this, the assembly believed that the creation of a real pan-orthodox youth and young adult ministry agency would help to unify ministry efforts across the church in America so that youth workers didn't have to spend their time reinventing the wheel in their various contexts and instead could devote themselves to ministering to the young people in their care. Hence, OYM. OYM is a unique place to be a hub for ministry workers to find resources, trainings, and events. It is here to offer a unified vision for ministry with youth and young adults that can help you in your attempt to reach them with God's love. The bishops believe that creating OYM would give people like John, Joanne, and Yanni a place to turn for resources and to find some guidance in how to respond to the very real problems that they're facing in ministry. Moreover, it would help them connect with people like Jovana who are already doing excellent work and it could inspire theirs as well. Just imagine how much better things would be if we all worked together to solve this problem that keeps so many of us up at night. So there you have it. OIM was created because we have a problem with our young people leaving the church. And our hope is to be able to work alongside people like John, people like Joanne, and people like Yanni, so that they too can begin to experience the joys of ministry 
just like Jovna and her team of youth workers. So get connected with OIM now. Click on the links down in the doobly-doo and head over to our Facebook and Instagram at Orthodox Youth Ministries. Go over to orthodoxyouthministries.org, join our mailing list, and even get a free PDF. And of course, do all the YouTube stuff. Like this video, share it, and subscribe to this channel so that you can know when new content drops. OYM is here to help, here to serve. And next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about what OYM will do in order to help you minister to youth and young adults in your care. Until then, we at OYM... So, if any of you are interested in knowing more about what they're doing, because it is all very brand new, they have a bunch of videos that are about how to engage the youth. So, so for them, prayer especially is needed. Um, if you're doing any youth ministry work and would like to get more involved in youth ministry, you can do that in our parish, um, and you can use these resources to become more adept at your work. Uh, so that's all I had to present. Did anyone have any questions about any of these different ministries of the church? And there's a lot of videos. Yeah. Is there a Portland chapter yet that we're aware of? Of? OYM. OYM is a national ministry, so there are no chapters. Oh. The only ministry that I mentioned here that has chapters is OCF. Oh. So OYM is more like a, a clearinghouse for resources and training and that kind of thing. So as it gets developed more, then eventually it will be something where all of the different jurisdictions, people will be looking there for resources and that kind of thing. So. Didn't did they have some sort of like a, a ministry yeah. opportunity for young adults to, that was several months long or something that started in Pittsburgh. Is that the same thing? Yeah, so there's an, another ministry that I didn't mention, which is Orthodox Volunteer Corps. Oh, and that's something that also just started up. That's a way for young people to get uh, very involved in hands-on work within the community. So, yeah. Yeah, sorry. That's one other, one other ministry, yeah. Yes? Does the uh, OYM, um, you mentioned it being like clearinghouse for resources, would that include like Sunday school curricula, stuff like that? Um, <laughs> Eventually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I know, like, they, they've been there only two, two, or, two or three months old. Um, so right now they don't have a whole lot. But um, Any other question I had about them? Um, are they working with youth ministries just in the churches? Are they also working with um, Orthodox schools? Um, do they have the intention of doing that? Uh, I, I don't know about that yet. That would be nice. But I, I'm, I'm guessing that their main focus will be youth, uh, youth ministries within a parish life. But yeah, yeah. you can mention the need. Yeah. Good. And then uh, there are other resources that the assembly has. One of the big resources they have is um, in mental health. The Assembly of Canonical Bishops has tried to bring together to create and continuously update a directory of mental health professionals who are orthodox. So um, that's something else to know about. The website is assemblyofbishops.org, assemblyofbishops.org. Um, and there you can find out about all the things that they're doing. So please, most importantly, something all of you can do is pray for them. Pray for the ministries, pray for the bishops that they have the wisdom to work together instead of continuing in silos. Um, and yes, may God grant us all that we see this as the church continues to come together. Thank you. I'll close with a prayer. Since it's Christ our God, the one and true God, we pray that you guide the Orthodox Church here in America as it yearns towards oneness we pray that you guide especially these who have been entrusted to these roles within our church, that you may give them the wisdom and the prudence and the patience to continue in their work, and that we may be emboldened in our prayer for the whole church so that it may be united in you. For you are holy always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Amen.